The official statistic is that around 600 million people on the planet are viewed as being at risk from volcanoes. The quintessential volcanic hazard is something called a paraclastic flow, and that's what killed the inhabitants of Pompeii in AD 79 during that Vesuvius eruption. This city and, and many others on the planet are, are perilously posed on the flanks of potentially very active volcanoes. We're seeking to understand how volcanoes work, and obviously that's very closely tied to the humanitarian aid, trying to forecast eruptions in order to provide sufficient forewarning for people to evacuate. We tend to fashion such civilized surroundings for ourselves that we forget what a violent planet we actually live on. I think from a fundamental point of view, volcanoes are fascinating in that they provide a, a keyhole, if you like, through which we can view the stuff that goes on in the center of the Earth. What we're trying to do is, is develop a completely remote way of measuring carbon dioxide emissions from volcanoes. Uh, carbon dioxide as a gas is very important within volcanology. One might expect to see the carbon dioxide emission really kick off, really increase, potentially weeks to months in advance of eruptions. This is a laptop computer that we're using to, uh, to collect the data. So this is going to talk to the spectrometer, which is here. So the spectrometer tells us what gases are in the plume and in what abundance. We found that the computer kept crashing, so we just had to come up with a very simple way of, of completely damping that vibration, which a plastic stool, some rubber bands, and some rubber foam achieve perfectly. Yeah, that's good. Just hold that line. You see how the path goes down to the right? And there's a sort of bend. What we're trying to do is to enable measurement of, of carbon dioxide emissions, but enabling the, the scientists to remain at a, at a completely safe distance from the volcano. The helicopter we've worked with so far is very much a proof of concept device. This isn't something that anyone can pick up and fly. You need to be an expert pilot in order to use these, these aircraft. Spin it around and go back. A little bit lower this time if you can. Secondly, you need to be relatively close to the volcano. What we really need is an aircraft that anyone can fly, and an aircraft that can fly from much further. But such aircraft are obviously much more expensive. The Rolex Award will enable us to buy a more sophisticated helicopter which can carry larger payloads, which can take off further from source and which can be piloted by someone with very little training. The reality is in science that getting funding is incredibly competitive. So when anything gets funded, particularly through an award scheme like this one, it's really gratifying. And uh, yeah, my response has been emotional. It's brought a, um, I suppose, just a very deep sense of contentment.